my PhD project that is entitled Social Networks Integrating New Technologies in Secondary Education uh, in Brazil. Uh, for me, it's very tricky to, to tell that it's in Brazil because it's, Brazil is so big that we are doing it in two different states and in very located places. So don't generalize that I need to change the site. I am doing my PhD in the uh, Freie Universität in Amsterdam and Bert Van Uwers is my supervisor. I think most of the, the, the older people here know him very much. Well, when we think about Brazil, Brazil is the country of football. <laughs> carnival. Oh, the, the carnival from Rio. Again, well, it was the country of football because uh, until this awful team was uh, in charge of the national team, there's nothing more to say about that. And of course, when, uh, the worst thing when people ask, uh, when I talk to people here in Europe, what are the impressions of Brazil? It's that the Brazil is the country of monkeys. They think that you find monkeys everywhere. I love this monkey, look at this Anyway. But what Brazil really is, is a land of contrasts. We have, for example, São Paulo, that is a, the, the biggest capital in Brazil. And we have my hometown in the countryside that is like 10,000 inhabitants. And this is a quite big city for a, a countryside town. We have even cities with 1,000 inhabitants. So it's a land of contrast. When it goes to schools, it's the same. We have schools equipped with smart boards and with computers and so on, with access to technology. And we also have schools that have no windows, no doors, no seats. So it's a really contrast lit. And then what happens? As a, I have experience as a, a regular school teacher. And then I had a problem because all my students wanted me to use digital technologies with them. And it was puzzling me. And then we can also have this lack of technological tools in schools. Not all the schools are equipped, as I showed before. Uh, communication between teacher and students is very limited. Why? Sometimes you have 60 students in one class. So how, how can a teacher reach all the students that they have? And it's very normal, especially in high school, in the, the uh, upper secondary education. Uh, and then, as I told, the students demand the use of uh, digital tools at school. So what came to my mind? This was my initiative uh, as a teacher. Uh, I, just, I, I thought it would be great to minimize a little bit this technological gap in schools in a way that we could improve communication. So the, my focus in the, the, the research is the communication between teachers and students. Uh, and as a consequence, improve the students' engagement as well in the activities. So I base all this, this idea in the cultural historic activity theory. I will not show any triangle, uh, Veresov, <laughs> so don't worry. Uh, I don't use the triangles. And I'm also based on the critical cooperative research. That is a methodology developed by, by some colleagues in Brazil, from Brazil. And it's a well-established methodology there. I have some difficulties in explaining it still in Europe, but I'm, I will get there someday. So what is the, the research context? I started the project in January 2012 in public schools, all public schools. It's very uh, important to emphasize that the public net school, uh, network of schools in Brazil is very poor, basically poor, and we have a very a uh, big network, a uh, private network of schools. It doesn't mean that they are good, but they are more equip equipped and they have more as access to things. And then, there I have 42 teachers participating and 354 students. And myself uh, participating in all the groups on Facebook. What did we do? First, we created a group on, on, on Facebook for teachers, only the teachers. I invited some, and then other teachers start invi in, started inviting other teachers to participate. In this group, we could discuss what to do with the students. So there's no design imposed by me. I simply invited the teachers so we could discuss and find a way we could meaningfully use 
this kind of groups uh, with the students. And then what they decided, that they are quite free to, to do the things they want. So for example, this teacher, five, he chose to create a group for students where he could uh, work with class E and class F, for instance. This teacher, four, was using only one classroom in his group. Uh, his teacher created two groups for two different classes. So they, they, they created groups to work with their students, first at their, their own convenience. So it was quite free in this <coughs> stage. What I use as data for the, the, the studies I'm, uh, I'm writing about, the posts from the groups, uh, uh, of the post from the group of teachers, that first one big one. Then the, the post from the groups of teacher students. I'm following five groups uh, of teacher students. Uh, also, two questionnaires answered by the teachers and a survey answered by the students by the end of the data collection. So, data is already collected and I, I can't do anything about that. Anyway, uh, again. The group of teachers on Facebook. This, uh, for instance, is my brother, who is a biology teacher. So you can see, is a very uh, collaborative thing, or positive, I can say that. Anyway, in this teacher, as a teacher's group, as I told you before, I invited 20 teachers from my network, colleagues that I have worked with, or people that I knew that were teachers. And these others invited 22 other teachers. <coughs> I am also a participant in the group. So I can uh, dialogue with them, I can criticize, they can ask things, I can ask things. So it's very uh, interesting this uh, positioning as a researcher. In this group, the teacher exchange materials, they exchange ideas, and of course they give suggestions or comments for improving of the group of teachers. Look, this is only the group of teachers level. Then when you go to the teachers and students groups on Facebook, uh, the teachers were free to choose the students uh, for legal purposes. Only students that were uh, older than 14 are allowed to were allowed to participate. So, because uh, the Facebook policy uh, means that people sh should be at least 14 to join the network, uh, they could choose one or more classes, as I told before. Even teachers and students are free to post or to comment anything. Uh, oops. The very interesting point is that the students can answer questions from colleagues and or, or other students. So it can be interaction teacher student, uh, student teacher student student. It's a very diverse uh, group. So here we have five groups of teacher students. Three teachers work with one class, and two teachers work with two or more classes. There's one teacher that put seven classes inside the group. And then, uh, what happened? The students from, for example, the seventh grade were asking the teacher to do some experiments that the students of the eighth grade were doing because they saw that on Facebook. So there is a, a whole uh, interaction between the themes that are being uh, studied in the other classes as well. For analyzing the data, I use some different uh, aspects. I, I have a, a multimodal analysis, so I can see the, the aspects of the post, the physical aspects of the post, and how, when they post it, how they post it, uh, who comments, how many people comment, and so on. The discursive and, or in conversational analysis, because I can also see what type of things they discuss it and how they discuss it. And the last thing is the network analysis, and then I can see how the, the, the patterns of inter interactions move it around the, the network. So first, what an <coughs> embarrassing result. In the group of teachers, that group of 43 <coughs> teachers, they do not collaborate with whom they don't know. <laughs> so yeah, of course, uh, I will put my face to be beaten. I, I'm not fool. So not, not a surprise, not a surprise. Not a surprise, Absolutely. yeah, of course. So it confirms lots of theories about that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but uh, the teachers tend to collaborate with the teachers that are from the same school. And then, of course, it's easier. They, are, they work together and they can even collaborate uh, face to face. They don't even need to type uh, on, on the group. Uh, 
And then there's a consequence of this, that they collaborate in their own schools. They created groups on Facebook for their schools. So the teachers could work together in those schools. Uh, and this is for me the most amazing part. Schools in Brazil never give time for te teachers for anything. It's very hard to obtain any time for free or being paid as a, to, do, to develop some activities. And one of the schools that was from those, those teachers, they paid one hour so the teachers could work on the project. So it, it seems a little, uh, uh, only a little, but it's an advance. It's a miracle. And then here you can see, <laughs> in the first moment, moment, the interactions in this group of teachers goes to the up, and then <laughs> it's, it gradually goes down. So uh, the, the blue. Of, <laughs> the effect of novelty. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's new true, toy, for sure. New toy, play sometime again. Uh, there you go. Yeah, you can see. Uh, the gray line is the number of uh, the number of posts they made for a period. Then the uh, orange one is the total number of interactions with comments, and then the blue one is the view per post. The teachers were even not assessing the group anymore. So in this big group, but it doesn't mean that they weren't working in the smaller ones. And then with the groups of teachers and students, we can see that the teachers reported that the students. Improved communication inside classroom because of the group. They, are, they were interacting more inside the classroom because they were interacting more in the group. Uh, and this is a report from the teachers. They were more engaged and they also have improvements in the final grades. So if, if there's a lot of uh, things at stake and they could manage to, by improving communication, they also have an, had an effect on the, the, the grades. Uh, for me, it's not the important one, but anyway, it appeared. And the students, what the students to told about the, the, this work with groups, they also see that they improve the communication with the teacher because since they have this asynchronous uh, time for communication, they can simply post a, a doubt they have, and the teacher can answer at any time. And the students assure that that the teacher is present there even if it's outside of the classroom. So for me, it's very important this. Uh, the students also reported that the teachers were using more digital media, digital re uh, resources with them. Because the teachers were using more to uh, digital things, they were more interested in the topics studied in the classroom. In the bio biology class, they would use videos, they would use uh, links, they would whatever. Uh, again, they, they saw their improvement <coughs> in the grades. And other teachers from the schools, that uh, each, school start, each school started, for example, for, with two or three teachers. They, since the students were having good results, the students convinced the other teachers to start using a group with them as well. Yes. So it's a chain, it's a chain. And then here, we see a, a, a general overview of, uh, of the five groups. The, the yellow one is the only one that goes down in the end, but there's a reason. The teacher left the school, and this is a problem that we have in Brazil. Teachers change school all the time. But, even so, he continued communicating in a small level with the students, which is very rare. If a teacher moves out of the school, he simply sees the relations with the school. Still, it's a good thing, I think. Uh, but it's not that good at his theory. It has some limitations. And from this, we can clearly see. For example, this is one, one group of students from the biology class, only one class with 19 students. In the first moment, only one, two, three, four, five, six students were interacting with the teacher. But one thing that I thought it was really interesting to observe in this group is that the teacher is the red, the red point. He's completely the center here. And he moves a little bit to the side. He still has some power here in the group. But look, we have students as big a student as big as him. So the students 
can uh, understand the concept behind the, the, this uh, inter online interaction, they start, and they started using. How long did it take? This is one year, mm. one year. And then this other group has a very interesting pattern. Although the teacher is still the center of the group, you can see that the students are gradually increasing their participation. Well, the size of the, the, the note indicates that they are participating more or less. So two different patterns, but we can still see that the students are participating more. And then the use of uh, the social networks does not solve the lack of technological gap in schools because it's still a, a, a very big issue and on how in, in what extent shall we use these or uh, make the students use because the government doesn't put any effort on doing that. Anyway, but communication and engagement were very influenced by, the, by using those groups and the students have a, had a significant influence on the teachers for using digital media. I think that is all uh, I have to tell you in a, in a nutshell.